This is an Evenflow Maestro Sport car seat. It's a combination seat, which means that it has two different modes. It can be used as a five-point harness forward-facing car seat and also as a booster seat once your child outgrows the five-point harness by either the height or weight, whichever comes first. The first thing you need to do when you get your car seat is make sure you fill out the registration card and send this in. It's really important to make sure your car seat is registered so that if there ever is a safety recall, then you find out and they're able to send you replacement parts as necessary. So send that out. The next thing we need to do is have our child sit in the seat to make sure that we have the harness set up to the correct height before we get it installed in the car. So go ahead and sit down for me. I'm going to have my child sit all the way back in the seat with her bottom all the way back and her shoulders up right where they'll need to be. Sometimes they're going to slouch, so you need to make sure you have your kid sit up right so that you pick the right slot. Now the slot that these came set at is just below her shoulders, but for a forward facing car seat, we want to pick the slot just at or above her shoulders. So I'm going to need to pick the next one up, the first one that I can see right above her shoulders. So that's the second slot from the bottom here, and I'll show you how we move that. Okay, you can hop up, see. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I can. So when we move these, I like to start out by loosening the harness all the way. Now I need to get to my splitter plate, and I feel like that's easiest to do if I loosen it all the way. So I'm going to remove these one at a time from the splitter plate, bring them out through the front of the car seat, put it back into the slot that I want to move it to and then reattach it to the splitter plate when I'm done. I like to do these one at a time because that way I don't lose this piece down below because while I'm moving one the other one is sitting there holding it. So now I've moved one, I can move the other. Make sure when you're moving these that you don't get them twisted or turned. It's really important when we're harnessing our child in the seat that there are not any twists or turns in the harness strap. So making sure you get that done correctly from the get-go is important. So now this is set up correctly for my child. When she sat down, I could tell that she was not sitting on top of this bottom buckle, but some kids who might have a wider crotch area might need you to move this bottom buckle out to the second slot. She was just fine in this one the way it is though. So now we'll go ahead and get it installed in the car. First part of installing your forward facing car seat in the vehicle is deciding which location you want to place it in. So in the third row of my vehicle, I actually only have one spot that has a top tether anchor. And the tether anchor is super important to use for a forward facing car seat. It's a really important safety feature because it holds the, the top of the uh, car seat back, which is where your child's head is. And it can really make a difference as far as keeping their head from hitting things in the vehicle versus not. So we always wanna use a top tether anchor if it's available. So I'm gonna place this car seat in the center position of my vehicle so that I can take advantage of this top tether. So I like to hook up the tether first but leave it loose until after I have installed the car seat with either the vehicle seat belt or the lower anchors. I'm going to demonstrate installation with the vehicle seat belt. And one of the things I like to do whenever I'm going to install a car seat is pull this cover up and away from the car seat so I can see the belt path where the seat belt needs to go through. Now I have looked in my owner's manual and I know how my seatbelt locks. This is called a switchable retractor. What that means is that normally it moves freely, but it has an emergency locking mode, which means when I pull it quickly, like if I were to step on the brakes, it goes into locking mode. This is for adult passengers or older kids, um, booster seats or seatbelts alone. But children who are riding in car seats need to have the seatbelt always locked. So what we need to do is switch it into automatic locking mode. In order to do that, I'm going to pull the seatbelt all the way out until it reaches the very end. When I let it back, you can hear that clicking sound. 
Your car may or may not have a clicking sound, but mine is really loud. And then when I double check it, it doesn't come out anymore. It only just gets tighter and tighter. So that's how I know I've activated the car seat locking mode. So I'm just showing you what to, how to do that mode first. Now the next thing I need to do is I bring it through the belt path of my car seat all the way through to the other side and buckle it in. When I'm installing my car seats, I generally don't pull it all the way out right to begin with because it's easier to make sure that I don't get the seat belt twisted if I only pull out what I need. I also like to look in here and make sure that nothing got twisted or turned inside the belt path. So now that I made sure that it's buckled in correctly and there's no twists in my seat belt, now I can pull this all the rest of the way out to activate the um, automatic locking mode. Now the next thing I need to do is place pressure on the car seat and tighten the, the seat belt by pulling up on the shoulder belt. I like to pull from right here on the side where it's closest in and just bring that up and towards myself while I'm pressing down and back on the car seat. And then I like to switch my hands and make sure I use both hands to get as much of the slack back into this belt path as I possibly can. So I'm going to do that one more time. Some people like to place their knee in the car seat, but you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to get it tight enough without using your knee. Just a strong arm, or sometimes I use my knee to push back against the seat as well. Once I have it in, and I think it's good, I want to check right here at the belt path and make sure that it moves less than an inch. Now this moves quite a bit, it's more than an inch. So this is not installed securely. Sometimes I need to reposition where it is on the vehicle seat. And I, you heard I just got a few more clicks there. Also leather seats are a lot trickier. So if you have leather seats, that may be a challenge for you. But now it moves less than an inch. So the last step that I have is to pull up on this top tether strap and tighten that tether lastly. The reason I do tighten the tether last instead of first is because if you tighten the leather before you install the seat, it might be hard to get it compressed down into the vehicle seat. But you want to make sure you get that all the way done and then pull the, the top tether tight last. So now I'm going to check again right at the belt path. There's a little bit of movement but it's less than one inch, so I know I've got a nice tight installation. I will demonstrate buckling my child in now that I have it installed in my vehicle. So, do you want to do your top buckle, Sweet Pea? A lot of kids are able to do the top buckle on their own, but they may still need a bit of help with the bottom. Good job. When you're doing this bottom buckle, make sure you listen for the click. If you didn't hear that click, then it's not all the way in and it will not secure your child. So listen for that loud click. So once I get this nice and snug down at her hips, I'll pull the harness strap and lastly, I wanna raise this chest clip up to right between armpit level. This looks like a great harness. These are right around her hips nice and snug. The, the five point harness is flat across her body and it passes the pinch test, which means that I'm not able to pinch any extra of the harness right here at her shoulder pad. The chest clip goes right at armpit level. So that looks good.